car modelling, I've been using a, a wide range of, of colour-coded wires, um, which works out well, but it's quite expensive. And I had seen this enamelled wire, and I know it could be used, um, but I've seen many videos of people struggling to use it, so I thought I would just create a quick video just to show how to actually use this enamelled wire. It's quite useful because it is completely insulated and it's very, very thin. When you compare it to the other wire, it's almost invisible. So if you're running it in, in buildings or along carriages, it's, it's almost undetectable, um, even when it is visible. So I'm going to start... Um, I'm just going to create a simple LED string using... A small section so to do that I'll need two pieces about the same length. Now this wire is readily available on eBay and I got this this big roll in Maplin. Um, this roll I think was about seven pounds um, and compare that to the coloured wire which are about three pounds a roll for a lot less um, this is also a single strand, so if it breaks, you know where the break is because you'll, you'll clearly see it. So it fits in the open hands quite nicely. Um, can take a, bit of, a, bit, a couple of tries, um, but the helping hands just, just grip it nicely. Um, I tend to have them both side by side in a straight line. Um, that means when I'm, I'm soldering on um, any LEDs um, that they're going to be straight um, and then once I've done the first set I'll move I'll move it along so as you can see I've got it pretty much straight the next thing I need is some flux there is flux in the solder I'm using but what we want to do here is we actually want to boil off the the enamel coating. Um, so I have a, a solid resin flux here uh, which just melts when you, you push your soldering iron in and you can see that the smoke coming off that is, is just the flux burning off. And we'll also use some solder. So I'm going to put three sets of lights. This is going to be for one of my coaches. Um, which I've shown in another video in quite quite a lot of detail. So I get some of the the resin on and then I just start applying some heat and a little bit of solder and then what will happen is the coating will just boil off at that point giving me a nice copper colour underneath. Takes a few minutes, but once once the solder sticks, you know you've you've gone through, and then I can do the other the other side. And again, just hold holding the soldering iron over the area, quite specific, so that the area that's that's stripped is is very small. The smaller the area you can get, the better, because the less chance you've got of a short circuit happening because now when, once you've burnt off all the, the coating it's no longer um, insulated um, so what I do to to remedy that is I make sure that when I put my LED I make sure that they're far enough apart that no matter what they're not going to touch and then there should be enough solder just there, just enough to melt. And then create my circuit. So there you have it, that's the first LED soldered on. Nice and simple. And a lot cheaper than using the colour coded wire. Especially when you're doing DCC and your colour codes don't actually mean very much when it comes to the LEDs unless you've got um, a rectifier 
or a diode in series as well. So, now what we'll do is I'll do another one. I'll do one on the end. So as you see, again, just a little bit of solar, just enough. And you'll see it burning off and then the solder sticks. A bit more fresh solder. See the solder stuck. So again, just go with the LED. I've seen people use brass rods for their LEDs in the ceilings of, of buildings. I think Everard Junction used uh, brass rods in the big shed that he built recently. Um, this, I think, is exactly the same idea. You're, you can just create a, a string as long as you want of, of LEDs. And what we'll do is we'll now do the ends so I can connect to my battery pack. So again, it's just a case of adding a little bit of solder and then burning off enough. You'll see it bubble. You'll see the, the coating go all black and then you'll see that your solder starts to stick. Again, I'll just do the other end and then we can test that those LEDs both work. While using this, it is good to know that the, the wire will get very, very hot. So helping hands are essential to do this. Um, otherwise, you need to keep your, your fingers well up above, well out the way. Otherwise, you'll end up burning yourself. So there we go, that should be fine for testing. And again, I'll get my trusted battery pack. And we'll make sure that I've got those LEDs both in the same direction, which I don't think I have. I think I've got one round one way and one round the other way. Or I've got one that's not working yet. I've got one round one way, one round the other way. So easy way to fix that is just to pop it back in. Touch the solder, touch the solder, and then flick it round. LEDs are always 50-50, it's like putting a USB into a computer, you get it right 50% of the time. So now that I've got two, I'll be able to check the polarity before putting any more on. And then I can just neaten up the edges. Perfectly safe. You're doing a couple of volts through it um, up to the 16 volts. It's perfectly fine. I'm having no issues with it. Um, I can see where things break, where things come apart, um, and the wiring is it's almost invisible when you when you don't know it's there. And I think it adds adds something stylish. So we'll just test them again, just to make sure what way around what. So there we go, that's both of those LEDs working and ready. So again, I can just start now adding in LEDs. For all my coaches, I'm doing four LEDs in the main part of the coach. Um, and then I may start adding in vestibule lights separately. Um, once I start going more down, getting um, DCC control. 
So got another LED here on the positive side. And as you can see, I can just quickly test, even though they're in the metal clamps, they're not going to short out because the wire is completely. is um, completely encased in an enamel coating. Um, it's also known as magnet wire. So I know that the far one is now my positive. So I know that my longer connection will go to the positive. And it doesn't take, take too long to pick up the knack of, of working out when, when you've burnt through the enamel coating. It's just remembering you need to leave it there long enough so that you've got enough solder stuck there. And that's the benefit of adding the additional flux is it takes longer for that to burn. It takes longer for that to burn off. So as, as you're going, um, you can keep your solder liquid for a little bit longer. And as you can see, once it's there, it's quite simple just to reflow that solder onto the leads of the LED and then give it a second to cool down. And then we'll just do one more and then that'll be for this coach. All that I'll need. It's a bit, a bit of a task doing all these coaches. All the lighting inside is all going to be the same, all connected up in virtually the same way. Some will have used the black and red wiring for the for the, the roof, um, and, and others, most of the others will all be um, this thinner, much much more easy to control wire. Because you've only got one strand, you can make it bend, you can fold it um, almost and make it go around 90 degree corners and once, once you put it there it'll just stay, um, put it in between the Metcalf kits, um, up the walls, if you're putting um, interiors in you can put it behind, behind all the the interiors that you do. So there we go. And again, just quickly, once there's some solder on on there, just takes a second to to melt it and then reharden. And again, we'll just double check that we've got them all in the right the right order before we snip off. So I've got that one the wrong way around again. Once you display the legs, LEDs are quite tricky to determine what what way they should be. But again, this this wire does just take a second to warm up once it's once you've got a, a touch of solder there. It doesn't take long to to melt it, get it back. So now we'll go the right way around. And all these lights should now light perfectly. There we go. So I'll just tidy them up and then that's how you use magnet wire. And that's me got another set of lights ready to go into another carriage. Again, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.